um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, where Paul said, in the latter time, it will be difficult to be a Christian, it will be difficult to live holy, it will be difficult to really serve God well. So Paul foresaw this end time, that end time will come to so difficult for people to really serve God, to really obey God, to really do the will of God, to really do things in the biblical way. See, Paul went from that chapter 3, then in chapter, I mean, in chapter 4, okay, can we look at the um, um, Living Bible, please? Okay, it's okay, it's all right. It's okay, that's okay. Chapter 4, that's fine. Chapter 4, verse 3. That's okay, let's go to chapter 4. So in chapter 4, it's not mentioned about the uh, same end time where it will be difficult. Um, where you will no longer hear sound doctrines, sound teachings. Where people will not be comfortable when sound doctrines, sound teachings have been, it's been taught. They want to get to places or people that will want to teach them what they want to hear. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers I'm mean, saying that in the last time the end of time there will be people who will not be comfortable with sound teachings there will also be people who like to teach teachings that are not sound doctrines so they can get crowd to themselves do you get that? That means two kinds of people. People who will, who will not love or like sound doctrines and people who will love to also teach things outside the sound doctrines to gain more people to themselves. So that is the season and the time that we are in. And that is why the scripture said, believe not every spirit but test them if they are of what? Of God. For false prophets are all over. When, if, when you, you love listening to a man of God, check his teachings. Check their teachings to be ensure they are sound. To be ensure they are the teachings of Christ. This is so important. To be ensured that the teachings are teachings of Christ, not manipulated, not twisted, not twisted truths. Not just saying prophesy, prophesy, no word of God. You see, there are people who love to hear such things, and there are also people who love to teach such things. So this morning, we're looking at growing up in Christ. It is the desire of our Lord and Savior for us to grow. Just like when you have a child, you want the child to grow. Every child has their stages. The infant old, the baby old, the infant old, the teenage old, and to the adult old. So the child grew from stage to stage. From the very first day you became born again, the desire of Christ is that you grow. You grow in Christ. That is his will and desire for us all, that we grow. And we can never stop growing. We can never what? We can never stop growing. Our growth is limitless. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're taking our first reading this um, afternoon from First Peter. First Peter. 
All right, let's take it from John first. Let's look at John. John chapter 15, verse 4. Verse four. I would like to read from the Living Bible. John 15, verse 4. John 15, verse 4. Hallelujah. Can we read together? It says, take care to live what? Do what? And what? And let me what? A branch can produce fruit when severed from the vine. Nor can you be fruitful apart from me. So Jesus is saying, your growth starts by you living in Jesus and Jesus living in you, abiding in Jesus. You cannot grow elsewhere except in him, except you are planted and rooted in him. He said, take care to live in him. Not only on Sunday. Take care to live in him on daily basis. And let him live in you on daily basis. So your growth starts from the first day you became born again. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. That day you were planted in Jesus and Jesus was planted in you, in your spirit. Hallelujah. Take our second reading from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. This we use the English Standard Version. Colossians chapter 2, chapter, Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7. The English Standard Version. All right. English Standard Version. Okay. And now, just as you trust Christ to save you, trust him too. Trust him. Two, for each day's problem, live in vital union with, with him. Amen. Can look at verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with what? With thanks given. Now, I read it from the um, English Standard Version, um, very quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, here we go. It says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So as you have received Christ Jesus, walk in him and be rooted in him. Walk in him and be rooted in him. So you must first be planted in Christ, must abide in Christ before you can grow. So we'll be looking at some Kind of this, this message this morning or rather this afternoon is about your personal spiritual growth. That is what we are focusing on. Our personal spiritual growth. Now, what does it mean to grow in Christ? What does it mean to grow in Christ? To grow in Christ is to deepen your roots, your relationship with Christ. You deepen your root, we've seen it, we must abide in Him. You deepen your root with Christ. You deepen your relationship with Christ. Your relationship becomes stronger and stronger by the day. You are now in one union with Christ. To grow in Christ means to grow in the character and nature of Christ. So when uh, you are growing in Christ, it means you are growing in the character and in the nature of Christ. Daily, you are growing in his nature. Everyone sees it in you, sees it around you. You are growing in his nature. You are growing in his character. 
Number one, I said to grow in Christ means to deepen your roots, your relationship with Christ. And number two, I said to grow in Christ means to, to grow in the character and nature of Christ. Now, to begin to develop Christ-like character. Amen. To begin to do what? To begin to develop Christ-like character. So that is what it means. So when, when I say I'm growing, when I say you are growing, you are seeing the Christ-like character in me. You are seeing some level of development in my character. Some level of change in my character. You are, you are able to see that my character resembles that of Christ. That is what growth is. My character is changing day by day. People in the house can attest to it that my character is changing day by day. People in my place of work can attest to it that my character is changing day by day. My business partners can attest to it that my character is changing day by day. My friends can attest to it that my character is changing day by day. My colleagues can attest to it that my character is changing day by day. Those who used to be same partners they can accept, attest to it that my character is what? Changing day by day. That is growth. To grow in Christ means to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Paul said that I might know him. Can we look at Ephesians 1, verse 17? The prayer of Paul. Ephesians 1, 17. New King James Fashion. Ephesians 1, 17. It said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You are knowing God more and more every day. You are knowing him more and more every day. To grow in Christ is to grow in wisdom, to grow in understanding and the power of God. To grow in wisdom, to grow in understanding and the power of God. Number five, to grow in Christ means to grow in deeper love for the Lord. Your love for God is increasing day by day. It's getting deeper and deeper. You get to a level that your love for him is getting deeper and deeper. Sometimes you just voice it out all alone. Jesus, I love you. You are eager to know what love means, loving him means. You are always ready to obey his instructions. When he's speaking, you are prompt to obey. He said, if you love me, you will what? You will obey me. Hallelujah. To grow in Christ is to grow in deeper commitment to God and to his service. To grow in deeper commitment to God and to his service. To grow in Christ means to grow in prompt obedience to his voice. To grow in prompt obedience to his voice. Now, there are some facilitators that enhances spiritual growth. Now, those who are lukewarm, maybe they were once doing it and they stopped doing it. Maybe some have never done it before. So some of you is going to be familiar with you, something you already know. Maybe you stopped doing it. Or something you have not heard before. Or something you have heard that you have never done. If you see someone who used to be very hot and it's, it's not lukewarm, because he stopped doing these things, I'm going to analyze. 
Satan doesn't want you to grow in Christ. Remember that. Because your growth in Christ is a threat to his kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the things that will facilitate your growth in Christ. Can we look at Colossians 4 verse 2? Colossians 4 verse 2. Colossians 4 verse 2. He said, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Now that you are born again, this is a practical step I'm going to be teaching you. They are not things that are strange or new. They are not mysteries. Now, if you want to really grow in Christ, number one thing you must do, your daily fellowship with him. Your daily what? Your daily fellowship with him. Daily fellowship. And that daily fellowship is divided into parts. Now, for those of you who just heard that, you see that your fellowship is not daily. For some, you don't even have fellowship. You spend time with the one you love, Now, in this daily fellowship, must be daily prayers. Must be what? Daily prayers. Under this daily fellowship, there must be daily prayers. Daily. 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 Not when I have time. Not when I'm less busy. Not, not when I'm not f- feeling tired. Daily. Daily. In the morning and at night. Daily study of the world under this daily fellowship. Daily study of the world. Daily study of the world. It must be daily. It must not be today. Then maybe next week or next tomorrow. It is daily. These are the things that enhance your personal growth. Because each day you come to the, you pick up the word of God to study, you're going to see something new, something different. And definitely the Lord must speak to you through his word. So under daily fellowship, we have what? Daily prayers. Daily study of the word. Daily meditation. We are still under daily fellowship. Still on number one. Daily meditation. So after studying the word, meditate on it. I'm not speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking to those who really want to grow in Christ. What did God tell Joshua? He said, this book of the Lord must not, what? Joshua 1.8 must not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt what? Meditate upon it once in a week. No, read your Bible, Mr. Solomon, please. That is not correct. Yet I'm going to upon it. No, that is not quiet. Don't know the Bible. Edda. That shall be written upon it when? Once in a year. Edda, that is not correct. Who knows it? Who, who agree with me? Amen. That shall what? Joshua 1 8. That shall what? But you, you said no. I will only read it in the church. But you, you said no. I will only read it when I want prayer points. You, you said no. I will only read it the day I wake up and I'm happy. You, you said no. I don't have time. We don't have time for the world. You don't have time for your growth. You, you said no. 
I'm too busy. God should understand. Are you as busy as Joshua? Please put the verse back on the screen. Joshua 1 8. Were you as busy as Joshua? Someone who was in charge of one million people leading them. How busy can you be? This was an instruction. You know, God takes note of every detail instructions he gives to his children. God doesn't speak carelessly. God will not say two when he means one. He will not say five when he means four. God doesn't speak what he doesn't mean. He speaks what he means and means what he says. So when God is, God is giving you instruction, pay attention to every details. Every details that God gives to you is important. So Joshua paid attention to every details that God was giving him. And he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Meaning, it is what you speak. It is what you speak. You speak the word. You confess the word. The word of God is always in your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and what? And night. God, I don't have time. You know I'm busy. I'm too busy. I leave the house by five. I come back by 11. God, you, God, you yourself see it. I leave the house by 4 a.m. I come back by midnight. God, you should understand. God doesn't understand that. Joshua was busy, actually busy. But God said, this book of the law, apart from speaking it, after studying, meditate. So what does it mean to meditate? To pick a verse of the scripture and put it in your heart. You are thinking about it. Instead of thinking about the person who offended you, think about the word of God now. You know, some people wake up in the morning. What overwhelms them is the offense of, of their neighbor. That is what wakes them up from the bed. As soon as they open their eyes from the bed, is the offense of, they are obsessed with the offense of that neighbor. And they are meditating on that thought. It becomes so strong in them until they are ready to revenge. He so said, This book of the law, you shall meditate upon it. How? When? Day and night. Day and night. In the day, study the word of God. In the night, study the word of God. Your body might not like it, but it's going to, it's helping your spirit being. In the day, study. And in the night, study. Each time you study, you are engaging in fellowship with the spirit being, the Holy Spirit. Don't you know? Each time you open your Bible and you want to, you are reading, you are engaging yourself with the spirit being, with the Holy Spirit. You don't need to see him. You don't need to shout. You don't need to say, hey, 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 I'm here. No. It's just there with you. You're opening the Bible. Attract the Spirit of God to you. Attract angelic beings to you. Pastor, how do you know this? Do you remember the story of the Ethiopian eunuch? He was traveling back from Jerusalem and he was reading the Bible. He was just innocently reading the Bible loud. As some of us will do. We're reading it loud. And the Holy Spirit took note of this man. And saw that he was not even understanding what he was reading. So when you carry the Bible, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is drawn to you. Into that room. At that point in time. And that is why each time you carry the Bible, demonic spirits want to force you to doze off. And doze off. And sleep. Some people, the Bible is their medication for sleep. Once they carry it, they fall asleep so, so quickly. So, when you carry it, the Spirit of God comes around. You might not feel the Spirit of God, but it's there at that point in time. Start a, conver a conversation with Him. Teach me the Word. Open my eyes to see what I'm reading, to understand 
that that I'm reading. Then you pick a verse after studying. You are meditating upon it. You are pondering it upon your heart. You are thinking about this verse. And every question that arises up in your heart as regards that verse, there is always an answer by the Holy Spirit for you. It might be a word that will guide you for the day. He told Joshua, he said, on this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then what? You have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's just something there, but it might be the next point. Then, all right. See under... Um, okay. Now, the first thing we said, things that growth facilitators, I said, well, number one, daily fellowship. And under that daily fellowship, we have what? Daily, your daily prayer. Your daily study of the word. And your daily quiet, your daily meditation on the word of God. And number two, facilitator for growth is learn daily obedience to the word of God. Practice daily obedience. Practice the things you read. Be a doer. Try to be doing what you are reading. Force yourself to do what you read. Is someone hearing me? Force yourself to do what you are reading. Force yourself to adjust to what you just read. If you fall short, come back to it again. Force yourself. For this time, God says you are love. Your nature is love, joy, peace. And you find out that you have anger problem. And you just read about it. The hunger rests in the bosom of fools. I refuse to be a fool. And the love is not easily provoked. And then you fell into anger. Quickly come out of it. And declare, I am love. My nature is what? Is love. James chapter 2. The Living Bible. So learn daily obedience to the word of God. Learn to begin to apply the word that you read or study. Learn to begin to apply the word of God that you read or study. It's not just not reading the word of God. But apply it. Try to apply it. That is where we make mistakes. We read, we don't apply it. We can read 10 chapters, we don't apply not even a single verse. You can't grow that way. Learn to apply it. Discipline yourself and begin to apply the word of God you read every day. It will amaze you what God will do with you. It will really amaze you what God will do with you. Because God takes notes of obedience. Now, James, sorry. Um, yes, James chapter 2. From verse 21. Can we read together please? Can you join me to read? Don't you remember that even your, our father Abraham was declared good because of what he did when he was willing to obey God, even if it meant offering his son Isaac to die on the, alt on the altar. The next verse. You see, he was trusting God. Sorry, it's James chapter 1. It should be James chapter 1. Sorry, not James chapter 2. James chapter 1, sorry. 21. All right. Can we read together? So get rid of all that is wrong in your life. Wow. Both inside and what? And humbly be glad for the wonderful message we have received. For it is able to save our souls as it takes hold of our heart. David said, the word of God I've written in my heart, 
don't take it away from there that I might not sin against the Lord. He said, how can a man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word of God? Now, now as a, a, someone who has the zeal to grow, you saw a verse like this. You have the hunger to grow. It's your desire you want to grow. You saw a verse like this. It's, it's speaking to you directly. He said, so get rid of all that is wrong in your life. So are you not going to think, what, Holy Spirit, what are the things that is wrong in my life that I need to get rid of? If you, really, if you are sincere, you really want to grow, you will ask yourself such questions. What are the things wrong in my life that I should get rid of? What are the things that is not consistent with the word of God I should get rid of? If you really want to grow, you will ask yourself those questions. The Holy Spirit will be pumping those questions in your heart. We'll be repeating it. These are the things. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Put an end to this. You might not even hear some from the altar. But the Holy Spirit personally will be telling you as you are studying, this thing you have to get rid of it. This happened by, as a result of your daily fellowship with him. Your daily study. He will be pointing things to you because he wants you to grow. He know you cannot grow having these things in you. You can't grow that way. He know you cannot grow that way. So get rid of all that is wrong in your life. Both inside and what? And outside. And, um, and humbly be glad for the wonderful message we have received. For it is able to save our souls as it take hold of our hearts. The next verse. And remember, it is what? Can you read with me, please? It is a message to what? Not just to what? To listen to. So don't fool what? So now this verse also speaks back. So if I listen and I don't obey, who am I fooling? Myself. I fool myself each time I hear the word of God and I don't obey. I'm not fooling you. I fool my own self. Go ahead. Go ahead. For if a person just listening and doesn't obey, is like a man looking at his face in a mirror. As soon as he walks away, he can't see himself anymore or remember what he looks like. Are there people like that? Every morning you stand before me right before going out, most the women. Do you forget how you look like? He said, that he said people who obey who read the word of God, who hear the word of God, and would not obey, they are like that. They forget how they look like. They forget how they look like. You are love. That's how you look like. You are joy. You are peace. You are long-suffering. You are a royal priesthood. That's how you look like. I thought you would shout amen. amen. You are a choosing generation. That's how you look like. You are a child of God. Born of God. The greater one is inside of you. That is how you look like. You are holy. That is how you look like. You have the nature of Christ in you. That is how you look like. You are obedient. That is how you look like. Verse, the next verse. But if anyone keeps looking steadily into God's law, God's word, for free men, he will not only remember it, but we do what he says. And God will greatly bless him in everything he does. Who wants the blessings? Those who are who hear and what? And obey. Now, growth facilitation, as I said, number one, daily fellowship, remember? Number two is what? Daily what? Obedience. And under that daily fellowship, I mentioned daily what? Prayers, daily study, 
and daily meditation on the word. Then number three, the third growth facilitator is your fellowship with the Holy, Holy Spirit filled believers. F your fellowship with Holy Spirit filled believers. Not just with everybody. Not just with everybody. But most of your fellowship is with people who are saved, who are, who are believers, who are genuinely saved. Where you encourage yourselves. You encourage yourself with the word of God. Let's look at what the book of Hebrews says. Remember the book of Hebrews says we should not forsake the assembly of one another. But the, the living Bible put it in a different way. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Hebrews 10 25. Look at what it says here. The living Bible, look at what it says. All right. Okay. It so said, let us know what? Can we read it uh, together? Wow. Stop there. Let us know what? Hmm. Let us know what? Neglect our church meetings. Don't neglect the Bible studies. Don't neglect prayer meetings when you are available. Let us not neglect our church meetings. Now, you read, you read this. Don't you think you need to adjust? Don't you think you need to adjust and say, okay, this place, this is speaking. This is how you grow. You read this. Say, let us, the word of God said, not the pastor. The word of God said, let us not what? Neglect our church meeting. Then if I have been neglecting it, what do I do? Talk to me. Are you guilty of it? Talk back to me. What should I do? Are you afraid? It's not a sin. You repent. God forgives you. What do I do? I just. I just. Because I just read the Bible. At my, my own private time, quiet time. I just. So let us not neglect our church meetings. As some people do. But encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is what? Drawing near. So if you hear word of God like this, and you keep doing what you used to be, what you used to, what you used to do, it means you really don't want to grow. Number four, quick repentance. The scripture says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Each time you sin, be quick to repent. Be quick to confess your sin to him. Don't justify it. Don't say Paul is like that. Paul also does the same. Janet also does the same. Don't justify it. Repent quickly. The scripture says that cover up his sin shall not prosper. But that confess and forsake shall what? Shall have mercy. Quick repentance also enhance each one's personal growth. Quickly, I'll be rounding up. Your personal evangelism, so winning. Taking it upon yourself, speaking to people. Now, how does so winning help to enhance my personal growth? Hello, anybody want to know? How does so winning help to enhance my personal growth? Because each time you are speaking to someone, telling someone about Jesus, or telling people about Jesus, definitely there are going to be challenges in their life that will require an attention. That will require attention, spiritual attention, and, and those challenges. And perhaps in you, you, you feel you don't have those gifting to be able to attend to that person at that point in time when we are ministering Christ to the person. 
But unknown to you, those gifts are there inside of you. It is in your evangelism and, and so winning that this gift come out. As those people come to you with those challenges, the Lord is able to use you as a, an instrument to minister to their needs at that point in time. Now, how do I know this? The first time I went for evangelism, now that was what happened. That was what happened. I went for evangelism, and I heard a voice say, enter this house. I heard it. I went alone. Enter this house. The night. Entered. I knew this was the Holy Spirit speaking, because it was, it was, I knew that this voice must be Holy Spirit. Enter this house. Then I entered, and I, as I entered, long story short, I asked for the owner of the house. And the person came out. Then, the voice that spoke to me said, I have a word for these people. So, when I got there, initially I was afraid. When I saw images, images in the living room, it was a duplex. I was scared. But how to deal, deal with that fear immediately? Then I was waiting. Holy Spirit, what is your word for these people? What message are you asking me to bring to them? As they say, yes, young man, what can we do for you? I said, the Holy Spirit asked me to come here. He asked a word for you. I said, yeah, go ahead. I said, there was no word. And I didn't want to lie. There was no word. Then I said, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. So as I was praying verbally, I was also praying in my mind, Holy Spirit, please help me. You are the one that asked me to enter this house. Please tell me what you wanted me to tell them. So I, they thought I was just praying, Father in heaven, we thank you. They didn't know I was praying my own to rescue myself from the embarrassment I was about to face. Then lo and behold, the whole thing came like a video. Then I began, I said, in Je and I was not confident to say, in Jesus' name. <laughs> now I got what the Holy Spirit wanted me to give to them. And I began to talk to the woman, elderly woman, and the man that was by, him, by his side. I was talking to them, telling them things. As I was, as the Holy Spirit was downloading it to me, I was telling them everything. Then I said, please go and see your pastor. If you go to church, we will pray for you. I'm on my way. He said, young man, sit down. Sit down. Now, when I was talking to them, there was no sign to confirm what I was saying, either we are true or not. So, but I knew that I wasn't faking these things. I knew that these things were, I was not just forging them. It was the Holy Spirit inspiring me to say them. So when I finished, say, young man, all these things you just said, I just finished discussing with this man, and I went upstairs, and then they came to wake me up and said that one young man wants to see us. What was she trying to say? That what the Holy Spirit said at that time confirmed what they just finished discussing. Now, what am I trying to say now? Your Evangelism brings out the gifting of God inside of you. There's no one without the gift. The gifts are there. As you continue to go out for evangelism, may those gifts begin to manifest through you in Jesus' name. Number seven, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Quickly, let's look at the proof of our spiritual growth. The proof that we are growing. The proof that we are growing on a daily basis. I think you would like to know that. Let's look at what are the proofs. Number one, your daily fruit bearing. Your daily fruit bearing. Your daily fruit bearing. You, a, 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 truth that you, a proof that you are growing spiritually is that you are bearing fruit on a daily basis. You are bearing fruit on a daily basis. You are bearing fruit on a daily basis. The, the fruit of the Holy Spirit... Bring forth in us these fruits. 
the Holy Spirit bring forth. We bring forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that helps to bring forth this fruit out of us. We bear the fruit of love. We bear the fruit of gentleness, meekness, temperance. Daily, people are seeing our character, our nature becoming like that of Christ, like that of the Bible we carry. Amen. You find that in Galatians 5.22. So the fruit of Christ, the fruit that he brings forth is the character we demonstrate on a daily basis. Now, number two, the change of character and the change of nature. What I mean nature, your human nature, the way you behave, there is always a change. People see it. People cannot testify to it. People cannot attest to it that this woman has changed. This man has changed. Hallelujah. We're running up now. But my final note is that be careful of false teachers. False teachers can hinder your growth. If you keep listening to false teachers, false prophets, they will hinder your growth. I said, believe not every spirit, but test them if they are of God. Jesus even told um, the disciples, he said they should be careful of the teachings of the Pharisees. They should be careful of the teachings, the doctrines of the Pharisees. Can we rise up as we pray? The Lord help us this afternoon in Jesus' name. I would thank the Lord this afternoon. Let's bless his name. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. Shala ba 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 kato mene te 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 bene. La show so 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 many kala bana matoshi kata pronos. Le kato mene te 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 to se tala ba 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 ba. Show so 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 te mene te 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 he bara kata ba ba. Amo show so so pani kara to mene show so manama. Le kete te kato mene kato she kete bara kato she to pene kete. Ala kata ta kato so 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 manama 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 manama. Can you pray and get rid and ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to help you get rid of the things that are hindering your growth? Can you put on the screen, please? First Peter chapter one. La kata ta kato mana show so so so. Ala kala ba 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 kato show so so na na mama. Ala kata ta malo show so so mani a jon to ba 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 ba. A show so so to mana mama mama. Ala kato show so to mana brana ta show so so to. Le kato show so no brana ba 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 ba. Le kato shanta ba 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 ba. Le kato show so 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 ta. First Peter chapter chapter two verse one. Can I put on the screen, please? First Peter chapter two verse one. Ala shkunta la entaro ma shanta. Le kato mana Mama, mama, mama. In Jesus' name, can, can we use the, the the Living Bible as we read together and then pray? The Living Bible, please. Can we read together? He said, "So get rid of your feelings of what a trade. Don't just pretend to be good. Be done with dishonesty and jealousy and talking about others behind their backs." Wow. Can we read that again? So get rid of your feelings of hatred. Don't just pretend to what? Be done with dishonesty and jealousy and talking about people behind their back. Wow. Do you talk about people behind their back? So we should get rid of it. And verse 2 says, and verse 2 says, now that you realize how kind the Lord has been to you, put away all evil, deception, envy, and fraud. Long to grow up into the fullness of your salvation. Cry for this as a baby cries for his meek. Can you cry for it this afternoon as you want to grow Holy Spirit, help me get rid of the things hindering me spiritually. Help me get rid of the things that are hindering me spiritually. The things I need to get rid of. The things I need to put aside. Help me get rid of them. Every word that I've heard this afternoon, may the word not stand against me. 
Shanto meni kato meni al. Zonto bala baba bala to meni sosota. Le kato shanto to bala bala. Allah kato shusa tapata. Le kato meni to shusa tal. Le kata mala baba baba bala kato shan. Le kato meni zonto mani al. Santa la balo shan. Le kreno shusa tara. I want to grow. He said you should cry like a little baby. As a little baby cry for me. You should cry to the Lord. Lord help me get rid. I want to grow. Get help me get rid of the things hindering my spiritual growth. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord, help me get rid. So satia ne malie so ta. I can't do many zonte brando shall. Help me get rid of the things that are hindering my growth spiritually, Lord. A zonte malaba la toshia. Amen. Let me touch us kurati. Amen. Let me touch andura ba 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 ba. Let me touch us so tari. Amala ba 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 ba. Lakato mena mama ma. Jozo so sata. Amala ba 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 ba. Lakala ba 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 ba. Shosko tala ba 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 ba. Lakala ba 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 shanta. Lakala ba 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 na to shanta nama. Lakala ba 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 shanta. Lakata ba 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 na ba ba. Lekete. Spirit move over me. In spirit move over me. Holy Spirit move me now. Move me now. Me. My life, holy again, spirit move over me, and spirit move over me. Holy Spirit, holy. Move me now. Can, can that be your prayer this afternoon? Move me now. Make my life all again. Spirit move over me. Hey, Spirit Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move me now, move me now, na na na, make my life all again. And Spirit, move over me. Spirit. Holy Spirit, oh, move me now, move me now, make my life all again, Spirit, move over me, Spirit, Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you for the word you brought to us this afternoon. Thank you because we will not just be hearers only, but doers of your word. We receive grace for that in Jesus' name. And the church shall say, Lord, amen.